Welcome to Marketplace Network and Pastoring God's Sheep. I'm your host, Pastor Timothy, and this evening I want to do a topic called Once Gay, Always Gay, Truth or Fiction. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. I will show that, in fact, once gay, always gay is indeed fiction. To make a statement like this is like saying, once a felon, always a felon. That is something that comes from the deceiver, Satan. The world wants to believe that nobody can change. Once you've done something, once you became whatever, gay, felon, whatever it might be, they want to believe that you can't change. Well, that's, that's a lie. If you truly wish to change, if you truly have Christ in your life and in your heart, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, you're a changed creation. The things that you believed in, the thing, the sins that you committed in your past, you no longer have an interest in. You no longer want to do them. Christ has taken over your life. Now, according to Ed Oxford, co-researcher in the Revised Standard Version Bible, archived notes. Now, Ed is a gay Christian, a graduate of Talbert School of Theology, and a researcher specializing in the history of the Bible, Bible translations, and the Greek and Hebrew translations of the texts associated with sexuality. One might say, he is a sexologist. According to him, Arsen O. Keate, Arsen means man, Keate means bed, meaning men who bed with other men. Mr. Oxford claims that this translation did not appear until 1946. <clears throat> he also claims that this translation did not appear until, oh, I just got through saying that, until 1946, but he claims that Leviticus 18.22, man shall not lie with man, for it is an abomination, originally read, man shall not lie with young boys as he does with a woman, for it is an abomination. Okay, well, what is the difference? If you're lying with a man or you're lying with a young boy, it's still a uh, homosexual act. You're still lying with the same sex. So let's clear that part up right there. He used the German word Nabenschander, Nabben meaning boy, Schander meaning molester. He claims to have found this in a German Bible written in the time of Martin Luther, founder of the Lutheran Church, born. 1483, died 1546. Martin Luther was a German priest, theologian, author, hymn writer, 
professor and Augustinian friar. Okay, according to Ben Witherington, an American Wesleyan Armenian New Testament scholar, a professor of New Testament interpretation at Asbury Theological Seminary, as <coughs> Arzen Okiatis literally and graphically refers to a man copulator, a, a male copulator, a man who has intercourse with another male. Again, what's the difference in whether according to Ed Oxford or according to Ben Witherington, you're betting with a man or you're betting with a young boy. It's still homosexuality. You're still having sex with the same sex. <coughs> These are two compelling statements, both with one compelling truth. That truth is either way you're gay either way you're homosexual it doesn't matter the same thing is true in answering the question once gay always gay truth or fiction once gay always gay is a concept from the enemy as is the act of being Scripture tells us in Proverbs 23, 17, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as the thoughts of his heart are, so is he. Now, remember, the enemy, the deceiver, Satan, can play with your mind. But if Christ, through the Holy Spirit, lives in you, he lives in your heart. Therefore, the truth comes from your heart. Now, what a man does, or a woman, does or says doesn't necessarily mean that it come, it's coming from their heart. Like I say, the deceiver Satan can play with your mind. He can twist the truth. And he's very good at it. He twisted the truth in my life for about 58 years. But I'll get to that later. An example of being deceived through the mind is Ed Oxford. He wanted to follow the call of God, but he was gay and didn't believe God could use him. He felt that he was damaged goods, an abomination. He found himself living in pain, depression, and hatred, self-hatred. Sound like anybody you know out there? He did everything he could to change from being gay, but nothing changed. He just found himself deeper in pain, depression, and self-hatred. Now, I don't know if something happened in his life before he became gay that caused him to feel that way. 
but he did. And he tried everything he could to change. Now this sounds like a self-portrait of myself. For 58 years, I was gay, in pain, depressed, and had a self-hatred. <coughs> I went through everything. I even, I prayed at one time that God would either change me, take the gayness out of me, the desire to be with other men away from me, or to take me out of this world. For 58 years, none of that happened. I believed Again, the deceiver works on your mind. I believed that because my prayer to change wasn't happening, that this is how I was supposed to be. And I, be I believe that Ed Oxford had that same feeling, that same thought. But that Seven years ago, when I finally believed and confessed in my heart that John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This being true, and embedded in my heart led me to 2 Corinthians 5.17. <clears throat> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. It took me a while of reading and rereading this scripture, praying, asking God to burn this into my heart before I realized that as the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, I am indeed a new creation in Christ. I'm no longer gay. You out there that believe might believe that you're gay or that are living that lifestyle, if you truly wish to change, I'm giving you the recipe of how to do that. Turn your life over to Christ. Believe in your heart not in your mind, that God, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, can and will change you. Confess John 3.16 in your heart and verbalize that to the world, that you have changed, that you are a new creation in Christ. You don't have to continue living a life that you don't want to live. You don't have to continue to be a wife beater, to be a drunk, to be whatever it is that you're doing. It might be drugs. You don't have to be on those drugs. You don't have to sell them. You don't have to sell your body in order to buy the drugs or to live. God will give you a way. You don't need those things. Accept Christ into your heart. Believe John 3.16 is the truth and allow the Holy Spirit to change you. Once gay, 
always gay is fiction if one turns to Christ and truly wants to change. Remember Matthew 19.26. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Romans 3.10. Perfection is impossible for anyone but Christ. For none is righteous. No, not one. This is meaning for man to change. He needs Christ in his life and in his heart. <coughs> I hope through this I have shown that if you are living by your heart and your heart has Christ in it, gay, always gay, is fiction. It is not the truth. It is a deception from the enemy, Satan. Before I close out, I want to pray for those of you out there that are listening right now and those of you that will be listening at a later time that God does change your heart. I can only guide you to him. I can only guide you to the truth. It's God that changes you. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to tell the truth, not just through my life, but through the life of Ed Oxford. I thank you for the opportunity to bring those that have not yet accepted your son Christ Jesus into their lives, into their hearts, that maybe they believe he is the truth, the way and the life in their mind. But they need to bring that mindset into their heart and believe it in their heart and accept your son as their Lord and Savior. If this is you and you want to change, you want to have Christ in your life, have Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat these words after me. Father, I believe your son died on the cross for my sins, for the things that Satan has created as true in my mind. Let your Son, through the Holy Spirit, teach me to live as a new creation in you, allowing the things, the sins that I've done in the past to be just that, the past. They no longer exist in you, and I thank you for that. Thank, I thank you for Christ dying on the cross. I believe that he rose on the third day and is sitting on the right hand of the Father. If you believe this, if you have just repeated this, welcome to your new life. Welcome to your new truth. I pray that you find a church in your area that actually teaches God's word and brings you up beyond just where you are right now, having accepted Christ into your heart. I want to thank you for joining me. This has been Pastoring God's Sheep. I again am Pastor Timothy, your host. 
God bless each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you next time.